resurrection, Isaiah chapter 58, beginning in verse number one, and it says this. That's right, baby. Cry aloud mm -hmm. and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness mm. and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight the in approaching God. <clears throat> Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit of all your labor. Skip down to verse number six, and very verse six says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you shall break every yoke. Skipping down to verse number 8, it says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear God. Then, take it with then. Then. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke uh, from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speak wickedness. As we're telling your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. This time. This time. I mean. I mean. It. You may be seated. You may be seated in the house this morning. As we prepare, prepare to be on the road to the resurrection. As we begin our Lenten season. We're going to tag on this text, man. Right now, you're preaching, teaching the topic. This time, I mean it. This time, I mean it. Brother Rashawn, have you ever tried to go after something in your life and halfway through, you simply gave up? It could have been an idea that you had, a challenging relationship you found yourself in, or just something that did not turn out the way you expected. Somewhere along the line, you threw up your hands and said, I give up, this just is not for me. What's even worse as Barry, what's even more devastating is when we give up on something we know we should have stayed with. Uh, we don't get do-overs all the time in this life. But when we do, hopefully we've learned from the mistakes of the past and we move forward. I'm just letting you know, Asbury, when you get another chance in life, please don't waste it. Don't take it for granted. Don't act like the world owes you anything. Don't get arrogant, and please don't get big-headed. Just thank God for another chance. Uh, you know how God works on your behalf, Asbury. He'll give us an opportunity to move. He'll open some doors for us to walk in. He'll answer our prayers. But you know, we'll still find a way to mess that up too. We'll stop and ask God questions when we were supposed to keep on moving. We'll block the door that he opened and kick over the blessing that he made. Why is that? Because the reality is, as Mary, when God blesses us, it will lead to a change in us. And truth is, we don't really want God to change us. Uh, amen, lights and walls. We, we say we want God to change us, but we really don't mean it. Uh, see, we want to hold on to the sin that makes us socially acceptable. We want to be blessed on our terms alone. Heal with a few exceptions, holding on to the pleasure of sin while wanting the full joy of the Lord. Don't you know you can't have it both ways? Don't you know, Asbury, if you want God to change you, then you have to give him all of you. Don't leave anything out. Don't try to reserve a portion for later. Give him all. That's why this seat, this Lenten sacrifice has to be different. It has to mean something, Asbury. See, I know we've gone through Lenten fast before. We've tried our hand at sacrifices, but this time, hey, but this time, this time, this time our spiritual sacrifice has to be different. See, this is what I noticed as better. Everybody in this room has a testimony. 
we know what God has done for us in the past. But if we want to truly go to the next level and mean it, we can't operate in the way we used to do. We can't get mad at every little thing. Everything doesn't deserve your attention anyway. We have to pick our spots with precision. We have to know that our words and our actions still have power. That's why this time, as very this season of sacrifice, I'm declaring to myself, I mean it. I, I mean every prayer. I mean every word I say. I mean every song I sing. I may sing out of tune. I may not sound like the choir. I may not know every single word in the hymnal. But guess what? It's coming from the heart. Right. I may not sound like the when I hit my liturgical dance, I, I may have two left feet, but God is going to honor my praise and worship because I mean it. See, far too long we had some folk who look good doing it, but don't mean what they do. I'm so tired of who so put the action to pay them to do something, uh, but they're not doing it from the heart. Uh. See, in this season of sacrifice, uh, God ain't trying to cut you a check, baby, uh, but God is trying to bless you uh, beyond your own understanding. Simply put, I, wanna, I want God to see that I'm changing for the good. I'm not faking this thing. Uh. This is not pretend. Uh, ain't nobody showing off because this time, uh, I mean it. 